Good morning, church. <clears throat> I always start with that, and <laughs> I picked it up from a friend. But I just uh, wanted to clarify, some of you aren't members of our church, our congregation. When I say church, I'm talking about people that believe in Jesus, that follow Him, that love God, love others, and follow Jesus. That is the church. So I'm not talking about only our congregation. I'm not talking about only people that agree with me. I'm talking about believers that follow Jesus. And so I just wanted to clarify that. So when I say hello church, if you're not a member of our congregation, I still consider you a part of the church. God's good. And he didn't lay out any barriers or any divisions. He wanted all believers to be one. That's what we strive for at Sile Christian. All believers. We don't have to agree on everything. We have to agree that Jesus is the Son of God. We have to agree that our first priority is to love God, the greatest commandment, Jesus said. And a second one is like it. A second one is like it that we love others as ourselves. And Jesus also tells us to follow me. And so that's what we're doing. That's what we strive for each and every day. Do we fail? <laughs> oh yeah. And I'll tell you what, right now, John is definitely aiming at me. <laughs> so I just wanted to clarify that just in case there's anybody that doesn't understand my view of what what the church is and i believe it's the biblical view all believers make up the living stones that create the house of god so that's where we're at last week and in first john 3 we were talking about sin and boy like i said even then I, that's one that hits me because the I, I just relate with the Apostle Paul. The very thing I want to do, I do not do. But the very thing I hate, that is what I do. This is Grace, our little Chweenie. And she's just decided she's going to get in on this this morning. But I'm about to put her down because she's a distraction. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we love our little pets. They, they're wonderful, wonderful creatures. God gave them to us. You know dog is just God backwards so it, I consider them gifts <clears throat> anyhow we were talking about righteousness in following God and sin evil in following Satan so we want to say evil is just the really bad stuff the really bad sins but folks I hate to tell you but no. sin is sin no and it separates us no. from God. No. So we want to be certain that our trust no. and faith is placed in Jesus. No. And that we live that no. to the best of our abilities with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Encourager, the one that God sent no. when Jesus got down. <laughs> I'm telling you, Puppies can be a pest. Oh, kind of summing up what we found last week as we went through uh, uh, 1 John 3. And we went through about verse 10, I think. Was that righteousness without love makes one just a religious Pharisee. And love without righteousness makes one a partner of evil. So we have to walk that line of just knowing that God understands we're not perfect. I mean, on the outside, I may look fine. But inside, I'm struggling at times worse than others with sin. Choosing not to do what God would want me to do but what I want to do. And it, it affects every part of our lives. 
relationships. Uh, it affects our finances. Uh, so, so many times we get so concerned about keeping money aside and building money for our retirement that we overlook needs right before our face. Righteousness without love just makes you a Pharisee. And you know what Jesus said about Pharisees. So, verse 11, he said, we need to love one another. For this is the message you heard from the beginning, John says, that we should love one another. <coughs> John has been emphasizing love as he's gone through the whole uh, epistle. Oh, it's it's Thank we've heard you. that from the beginning. First John two verse seven, he he reminded us, uh, love one another. Jesus said, John thirteen thirty four. So, we we are to love one another. That's the basic Christian message, that hasn't changed over the centuries. It's the same. Granted, there's some today that you know would kind of move away from that and say we're the judges and we should be judging everyone and and just accepting and, and working with people that agree with us never going to happen never going to work we're the conduit God uses to spread love not judgment he'll take care of that do you trust him to take care of it I do then in verse 12, John goes and gives the example of Cain. Not as Cain, who was the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Cain's disobedience came from a lack of faith. He probably thought, it was good enough. Now, Hebrews 4, 11, uh, yeah. verse 4 will talk about uh, Abel's faith was righteous and Cain's was not. And that, that lack of faith created hatred within within Cain and it made him miserable it made him miserable and God warned him but Cain's hatred eventually led to action against his brother love that it really comes from our new birth of burying the old man and raising the new man, the man that God wants in his house. Verses 13 through 15, John says, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not murder or does not love his brother, abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We should not be surprised, John says, that the world hates us. We're seeing that very clearly in our country today. Look at all the anti-Christian, the people that want to cancel, the cancel culture, you've heard of that. The cancel culture sees no reason in celebrating Christmas because who's Jesus? Nothing. There were a couple of legislators, one of them that went out and made a video threatening the people that like Trump. Now, I'm not going to get into the political part of it, but these people were gathered at their at their uh, capital, and and they were celebrating Christmas. They were singing Christmas carols, and these two legislators in that state 
were walking along, mocking them, laughing, and and calling them stupid and other names I can't mention. So we shouldn't be surprised that the world hates us. But we should be surprised when there may be hatred among the body of Christ. Because that will not stand. We can't have that. We'll end up the same way Cain did. That hatred will build animosity and and miserableness within our lives. We have to be certain that we learn and accept and love our brethren and others. That's the command that we've been given. That's how we know we've passed from death to life. A love for the people of God is a basic sign of being born again. If this love is not evident in our lives, can our salvation be questioned? But if love is present, and we do love our brethren, we love to get together, we love to assist, we love to be there for them in every form, every way, every time we can. When that is the type of love that you've cultivated in your lives through the help of the Holy Spirit, that gives you assurance of your salvation. You know God is is loving you for your love for others. This kind of leads to uh, the pursuit of, of fellowship. If we love the brethren, we want to be with them. I go back to the man in Corinth who was living with his father's wife. Now, it was a sin, and the church was kind of bragging about it and, and accepting it. And Paul told him, put him out. Why? Because maybe if you've got a fellowship of, of Christians that, that love God, maybe he'll miss it and change his ways. So they put him out. But then when he repented and wanted to come back, they said, ah, we're too good for you. I'm just paraphrasing. You, you can read it in 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> and then in 2 Corinthians is when the man tries to come back. And Paul says, welcome him. He's changed. He's repented. He wants the fellowship of the church. What Paul is telling us today is that the fellowship within a church should be so wonderful that if it's taken away, it creates an emptiness in us. Probably some of you out there are feeling that missing being together in the close fellowship with one another. I know I'm missing greatly those that are unable to come. And I understand the virus thing and, and the age thing, but at the same time, I miss them. I miss you so much. And this is this is what is supposed to be in, in the body of Christ. This is what should be always in the body of Jesus. Do you love people for Christ's sake? This is one of God's children. This is this is one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is one that bears the cross of Jesus daily, picking it up. If you do that, if that means a lot to you, then you're not of the world. You're not of the world. You don't hate your brother. Jesus said that if you hate someone, you've committed murder. Yeah. Well, eternal life doesn't abide with murderers. That kind of stands true. So I think, because I'm pushing 15 minutes, I'm going to close on that. And we'll pick up there 
that was what verses 12 and 13 I think I have to have to kind of remember where I was but just know that love covers a multitude of sins and loving one another is what God's called us to do I love you I miss so many of you I'm grateful for those that are able to still get out and and uh, assemble together and to come to different things but just know that this too shall pass and we're focused on the eternal because that's where God is God bless you have a great week and a great Lord's Day tomorrow we love you and we ask that you just continue to be faithful in serving and loving God amen God bless you